Greg, Maya, and Betty are not experts, nor do they claim to be. They're just a bunch of nerds who enjoy talking about movies, shows, and current events. So sit back, grab a coffee, relax, and enjoy a brand new episode of All Queued Up. Hello, everybody, and welcome to All Queued Up, the review podcast tied to stream services like Netflix, Amazon, HBO Prime, what have you. You know, you know how it is. Uh, I'm your host, Greg Dietz, and with me always is Maya Don Fisher and Betty Badger. How have you two been? I've had better days. How about you, Maya? I've had a really good day, a really good week so far. Um, had a lot going on. Um, yeah. yeah, D&D yeah, last night yeah. was fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. D&D was fun. I'm glad everybody had a good time. It was a heavy role play session. Yeah, Greg, you were so quiet. <laughs> You, yeah, your character was there in spirit, but just off in the background, not saying anything. Have you guys you guys met back up with the the monk? We got to a point where you had to. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I'll be uh, back next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't really do anything much, so it's cool. I mean, we we ran around like a Scooby Doo gang because I'm a fucking idiot. But <laughs> it, it was funny. Uh, the the. And they got to the city of Baldur's Gate. Okay. And essentially, it's, you know, spend a day or two in Baldur's Gate, you know, however much time I wanted to dictate. And I set it at three days um, just to make sure that they got all the things they needed to do before joining this caravan. And it turned into. Let's follow, let's tell, Sutterfuge, we're checking out everything, let's go here, <laughs> let's go there. And I'm just letting them do it. I was like, go, go for it, well, you know. And they're like, do we see anything here? Is anything here looking suspicious? No, oddly enough, nothing is. We get off the boat, and the first thing that Maya's like, you know, there's this cult here or this temple here. Make sure you're respectful and make sure you watch out for, you know, cultists. And I'm thinking, oh, shit, there's going to be an encounter in this city. I'm like sneaking off that boat. Don't nobody look at me. You know? <laughs> it was. Oh, my God. It was definitely interesting. <laughs> oh, uh, at the I'm, end. I'm excited at to come the back. End, Zeke went crazy again, and we let him. And he's like, I fired an Eldritch Blast at one of these hunters. And I was what? No, go ahead. He pissed me off. Go ahead. He did. It was fabulous. And nobody in the caravan saw. Well, it was over the hill out of sight. So he got away with it. Even the hunter didn't know what happened to him. He's like, what happened? Why do I feel so dizzy? You fell oh, off your horse. Funny. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Sean healed him. Yeah. Which was even funnier. And so I'm here's like, this adult hunter. <laughs> it was pretty oh funny. God. Yeah, I'm excited to come back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, 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 we'll get you up to speed. You didn't really miss out on too terribly much. I mean, it was mainly two different cities one smaller city, one big sprawling city. Um, but what I was thinking, what I think would be really funny is because my, cause I wasn't there to hear any of the session. Uh, mm -hmm. Durston's not going to know shit either. Like he's only going to know what, you know, has been going on with, with the monk, which that's what I want to be filled in on. I want to know what my character was doing during that small amount of time. Yeah. But what I want to do is ask the t the group, what, what happened and where they went and just like, but specifically ask like, Bambi's character <laughs> very specifically so that way like I'm like everyone shut up I want to hear from her and then just <laughs> just have the way that she explains stories happen god it would be funny oh it will be funny yeah. so, uh, uh, especially when she was trying to you know get a job to make some money it was oh, really no. funny <laughs> oh I'm excited I'm excited and she, oh, no. she used the spell, and we thought we were, you know, 
had a chance of seeing some wild magic happen. She rolled a four, and we forgot to say that if it was under five instead of just a one, that it would be a possibility of wild magic. So it didn't happen, but... It, I was know. excited. I was hoping it was going to, and I forgot that we had made that rule. Yeah, you could hear the shitty and grin in Maya's face. You can oh, hear it. A hundred percent every single time that we're doing something, and I know that Maya's like super excited about what's gonna happen to us, but we <laughs> don't know. You can hear the you can hear her just like, no. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> just every single time. It's so funny. So excited. It's like, and um, I don't know half the time. It's like, what are you trying to tell us? I'm so confused. <laughs> Oh boy, it's fucking. Oh yeah, I'm 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 looking forward to it. But um, if if you can't tell, we we really enjoy playing D and D on Tuesdays. Oh, we really do. Uh, yeah, that. Uh, the, well, I I love I love seeing. Sorry to cut you off, Greg. No, you're fine. I, I I love seeing, like, just a day or two later, in our group chat that we have that we use on Messenger. It's like, is it Tuesday yet? Is it Tuesday yeah. yet? I love seeing that because, you know, it lets me know that you guys are having a good time. Oh, we definitely are. I'm you know, loving it. Your poker voice is amazing because you you really, I don't know if I'm supposed to walk into the light, stay away from the light. I don't know. <laughs> How do I please you goddess? <laughs> well, it's not about pleasing me. It's about letting the story unfold as it will. I know, but once you've died, man, you get a little shaky. You get a little shaky. <laughs> <laughs> I never take yeah, anything very, 100% the, seriously. So, the the very first session that we had, Betty's character was killed in battle uh, by uh, pretty powerful for for their level for first level characters. It was a pretty powerful uh, NPC non player character, uh, and the adventure was si designed for this to happen. But what she didn't realize ahead of time is that there were clerics that would heal her and raise her uh, resurrect her and so the look on her face when she was downed she was just like oh no i lasted one session that's it you know yeah. uh, i still remember but, the ridge where i died twice <laughs> yeah well you weren't dead you were you were yeah, dying. Yeah, yeah. You were dying, but you became stabilized. Yeah. And, you know, that's what's so fun about playing D and D is just like you remember these little things that I forget. You know, I'd forgotten that it happened until you just reminded me, you know, because I've got so much to keep track of. Um you know, so I do forget things from time to time, and that's why it's important to keep notes, you know, and yeah but but for the most part it's just a lot of fun and i make up a lot of shit on the fly oh, <laughs> oh I have, yeah, us, i'm not surprised <laughs> it, well yeah. here's the thing everything that we did last night everything with the exception of two things was totally made up on the fly yeah the gambling That's... was fun we gambled we went to the blushing mermaid Totally made that up on the fly. It was so fun. <laughs> oh, I'm sad I missed it. That sounds like a good time. Um, um, but yeah, yeah. Aside from that, uh, just I'll cover a couple of things and I'll throw it your way, Greg. And we'll, go ahead. Uh, I finally got my new prosthetic foot Monday. Hey, that's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, you know, originally when I lost my when I lost my leg. My right foot was naturally longer than my left foot and a little bit wider. Um, so I had to wear a larger size shoe for the right foot than the left. So the prosthetist, when he created the foot for me, he was just like, give me a shoe. And I gave him a current shoe that I had been wearing and he crafted it to that size. Well, of course, when I came out and I realized, hey, I can wear a smaller shoe now. And I can wear, you know, I got I found Torrid carries shoes that are just big enough for me to wear cute shoes now. Well, they wouldn't fit my prosthetic foot. 
so I, I went in a few months back and I was like, look, um, this foot's too long. It needs to be shortened. And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, it's like two inches longer than my left foot. And they're like, how does that happen? And he's like, well, I created it to the shoe you were wearing. And I was like, yeah, but my right foot was bigger than my left. But now since it's can be f fit to the actual left foot, let's make it smaller. Thankfully, my insurance covered that. Um, so I got the new foot. And it's the same size as my actual foot, and now I can wear my new cute shoes, and I'm happy. There you go. Yay. And I've got my ears pierced again. i got a third hole in each earlobe. Uh, had a regular doctor's appointment, and everything was looking great. Got to get some labs done, but other than that, you know, all my vitals were benchmark perfect, uh, which made me happy, and I had lost six more pounds. So, you know, all in all, really good stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, positive, a, week, a week full of positive things, so I'm happy about that. Yeah. And was nice. And during the pre-show warm-up while we were talking, I booked an appointment for laser hair removal for my face and neck, so I won't have to shave anymore, uh, because mm -hmm. we talked about that at the uh, doctor's office, and, uh, you know, Misty is finally on board with it, and she's like, yeah, let's do it. Um, so I don't have to shave and cut my neck all the pieces anymore because every time I shave, because unfortunately I still have to do that, even though I'm on, uh, estrogen and testosterone blockers. And even though it doesn't grow as quickly as it used to, and, or as thick or as rough as it used to, it still grows. So I have to shave it every few days, uh, at least every two days and it cuts my neck all the pieces. Um, so yeah finally going to get that done then i won't feel like i have to wear makeup every time i go out because i won't have to be hiding five o'clock shadow right uh you know so that'll be a big 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 boost to my self-confidence and a big relief and yeah you know just also something that's you know better for my skin overall uh in that regard so yeah i'm happy about that and i got oh, a new good. book I got a new book yesterday. Uh, it is called One Weird Trick, A User's Guide to Transgender Voice, and it's filled with vocal exercises and techniques and physical exercises for your throat and things like that to help me with my voice because I want to learn to alter it to a more uh, softer-sounding, more feminine voice, and this is... Uh, filled with information on how to do so. So I'm really excited about that. So probably starting next week, you'll probably hear me practicing talking a lot more uh, in that regard. That's fantastic. But yeah, that's, that's, that's everything that's been going on with me, and I'm, I'm excited. Um, how, how are you doing, Greg? What's been going on with you for the past week? I'm good. Um, Got my uh, permit for the eighth time in my life yesterday. So I'll be driving again. And I swear to God, this time I'm getting my fucking license. Dude, it's driving me absolutely nuts. I've talked on the podcast before why I don't have my license. And it's just a lot of misfortune and like the old time um, scenarios. Yeah. Um, the only time I've actually ever taken the, dri the driving test was when I was 19. And failed that a bunch and then it just and then after that it was fucking misfortune after misfortune but uh, I, i'm gonna do it this time that's what i'm going um but what's funny is i uh i was like really nervous the night before about taking the test as one might be uh to the extent that i had like a lot of tension in the back of my neck fucking 100 percent of it <laughs> like didn't get a single question wrong but that's me in a nutshell. If I can worry about things I don't have to worry about. Oh, you know, I think anybody in that position would be worried. You know, there's there's going to be tension because it's just, man, it sucks. You know, like yeah. you're just waiting for how you're going to mess it up the next time. Trust me. <laughs> I think we've all been there. It's like, God, I have to do this again. You know, <laughs> yay. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, I mean. That, that tension comes. 
No, that's good though. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. (laughs) You're going to get to join us back on D and D on Tuesday. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So Um, yeah, it's all good stuff. Uh, so we're going to talk about, um, the two things we have scheduled are episode one of what if, and that's literally what if, uh, Captain Carter was the first Avengers then is the title of it. Um, and then we were, uh, before that, hold on. That's not the order I wanted to do things. Is that the order I wanted to do things? Well, we I want to bring up the yeah comic situation because i was gonna say that we're also going to talk briefly about the suicide squad um but that's a different reason so i think we'll save that to last because i want to tie the conversation into what if that's what i was trying to say yeah and my, and my brain was like nope that's a fucking tie that you can't unknot and i'm like yeah i got it a knot uh, that you can't untie you mean is unknot not a word <laughs> you said it's that's not, a tie a you word. can't unknot yeah you can't unknot the tie? Yeah, you can't? a tie. Like, I guess you're thinking about a necktie. A knot you can't untie. Got it. Understood. Nope. Yep. That's wow. my brain. <laughs> and this hey. is what it's like, everybody, working with Greg. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. It's funny. Uh, no, it's funny. I just thought that's why, that's why I made the joke. I'm not Anthony. Um, uh, but yeah, so so the discussion that Maya wanted to bring up, which I'll, you know, I'll just I'll just pass it to her because it's her it's her idea to bring it up. So I want to let her kind of go at it. So, Four well, years. well, great. Uh, All pressure on you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yesterday, uh, news came out that in the new issue of Batman: Urban Legends. Uh, which is a monthly anthology comic book series. Uh, Robin, Tim Drake, who has been Robin since, well, don't remember the exact date. I can pull that up in a minute, but it's not really pertinent to how long Tim's been Robin. He came out as bisexual and is going to be actively uh, exploring his bisexuality in the comics. Uh, which has caused an uproar uh, in the comic fandom, as you would think, uh, because here's here's something that you may not realize: people, especially in fandoms, don't like change. Um, but it's issue that dropped today is the day we're recording it, August eleventh. Um, basically, uh. <clears throat> Tim, he is uh he has a light bulb moment and reflecting on not knowing what he wants until the moment. You ever have moments like that? That you come to a realization about something that in your life it happens. Yeah. You know, it's absolutely but uh he visits an old friend that he had met for dinner to uh and basically agrees uh, to go on a date. And the guy was like, yeah. I th- or, or asking if he would want to go on a date with him. And Tim says, yeah, I think I want this. So, you know, it's, it's not something that just happened out of the blue. There's been a little bit of groundwork laid before. It's not entirely surprising. And there's been comic book characters before where they're you know, just said, ah, oh, well, they're just gay now, you know, and this is a little bit of a little bit different, you know, in a bisexuality thing, but people are angry and livid. And the most common argument that you see is, well, if they want to push this agenda on us, why don't they just make a new character? Anytime there's a change to a major character or an established character, there's a, there's a, I wouldn't say it's a large portion, but it's a very loud portion of the fandom uh, because they're making the most noise, obviously, that is just infuriated and 
oh well we don't want this we if you want to give us this give it to us in a new character here's the thing new characters are very very difficult to catch on and stay and my opinion is we're always growing and evolving as people i'm not the same person that i was 25 years ago i'm not the same person i was five years ago i'm not the same person i was a year ago <laughs> right uh literally um but things change 25 years ago i was 20 years old do you think at 20 years old i thought my life would be what it is right now so probably not would, because i didn't think my life would be like it is right now <laughs> yeah honestly i was such an idiot at 20 years old uh I never thought I would have a family for one. Uh, I didn't think I would live past 40 for two because I was of the mindset when I was, when I was a teenager, I was dumb as hell. And I was like, I don't want to live past 40. And if I get to 40, I'm just going to end it because I've done everything I wanted to do by then. That was the stupid fucking mindset I had at 18, 19, 20 years old. Um, so I've already outlived my expectations of my younger self by five years <laughs> um <clears throat> but you know things change people change people grow people discover things about themselves and as things become more the societal norm it's going to be reflected in the content that we consume and it should be reflected in the content that we consume. And my message to these people that get angry about this, oh, Robin's bisexual now. Oh, Iceman's gay now. Um, oh, they made so-and-so black. They've always been a white character. Uh, like Nick Fury. Uh, oh, they've made this change, and I'm angry. Get over it. Because the character doesn't belong to just you. The character belongs to everyone who consumes the character. And representation matters. It absolutely matters. Because there's some little kid out there. And yes, kids know when they're young, they're different. Mm -hmm. You're not, it's not a choice. It's not a choice. They absolutely know. Um. Some little so, kid out there could be reading it, and they're like, hey, Tim's just like me. He likes boys and girls. I like boys and girls. It's normalizing behavior that for ever was looked at as taboo or wrong. Or was criminal, thank you. Or, or was criminal, yes. And... You know, I think it's a wonderful thing to see this. Yeah. Uh, like, how am I going to explain this to my child? I don't fucking know. It's not my shitty kid. You talk to him. Like, stop. That, that's, that, that's always been my motif on that. And then the other angle that I always find funny is, like, why, why are you upset? Is it, are you projecting? Do you need mm -hmm. to talk to somebody, bud? Like, that's, that's always my angle on it is... This sounds like you are holding something in and you need to talk to somebody about it. If a fictional character has a sexuality discovery, if you will, um, that it's so wild to me that people just are so upset about that. It's so fucking crazy to me. Like it happened when we were watching Loki. Like when they kind of revealed that Loki was bi in the MCU. I know that the Norse one is Pan, if you will, or whatever the fuck I mean, it's called. Yeah, like, and that's the thing. It's like, first of all, this character is not even real. Second of all, they're basing it off of a Norse god who absolutely, you, he was not straight. You know, he yeah. was not even a he. You know, half the time. I mean, Loki could be whatever. Loki wanted to be, and Loki made it with many things that were not she's, you know. So, okay, and thing, species, yeah, yeah. Uh, the other thing I was gonna say that, like, always, uh, I guarantee you, 
the people that are pissed off about Tim Drake being by are the same fucking people that'll sit there and say in any conversation, like, I don't have a problem with gay people. Like, I, I have some friends that are gay. Same people. Long as they keep it in their bedroom and don't include me in it, I don't care. Oh, it's yeah, like, because everybody's you beating your door your down. your bedroom. I don't want to know about anybody's sex life. You know, it's one thing to express your sexual identity or your gender identity. I don't care. I don't care what you are. I don't care if you're gay or straight. What you're doing in the bedroom needs to stay in your bedroom. I don't need to know. <laughs> you know, don't well, bring up like, carried... you know, on, only gay people do this. No, they don't. Do you know how many straight people overshare? Oh, no. No. I mean, sometimes it's not in just the bedroom. It spills over into other rooms. As long as I'm not in the house, you do what you want, boo. <laughs> if I'm there, though, can we have some respect? <laughs> Keep it in your bedroom. Yeah. it's And then that's the other thing that, like, because we were talking about this a little bit beforehand, and with Why the Last Man coming out later this year, um, which... Next uh, month. From month. Oh, month is it next month? September 13th. Okay. I thought it was a little later. I didn't check a date, so I just know that when it comes out, I'm going to watch it because it's it's yeah. one of my favorite comics that I've ever read, and I know that Mike feels somewhat the same way, and that Betty's interested by the premise. So, um, you know, we were kind of talking about it a little bit, and um, I I was I, I caught the the official page on Twitter, and I was like, oh, cool! I didn't know they had like, of course, they have an official page, and it had a ton of comments, and I was just like, oh god. And it was a lot of people complaining about the transgender issue when it comes to how it's going to be approached within Why the Last Man. And it was kind of approached in the comic a little bit. Um, maybe not in the most, mo most, most, <laughs> no, list suddenly. maybe not in the most uh, uh, PC way, but it's also a, a very dark, grim reality. Um, and I was seeing a lot of people just, it was really fucking funny. Like one of the girls said, uh, tell me this is written by a man without telling me this is written by a man, which is incredibly funny to me because as yes, the comic is written by a dude, Brian K. Vaughn. Um, uh, the, the show is being helmed by eight women, two of which are transgender. Um, and I think that's incredibly funny that people are just shitting on it without checking that information. The other thing about people that I don't get is that Brian K. Vaughn wrote Saga, which has some of the best transgender representation in comic books. Mm -hmm. um, haven't read it myself, but this is what I've been told. Uh, I, it's on my list of shit I need to read. But uh, um, I think the point that I'm getting at, and I think the point of this conversation is Y'all need to stop letting gender roles and sexuality roles dictate a story to you. It doesn't ultimately fucking matter unless it's written into the plot. And even then, it doesn't affect your fucking life. Yeah. So to get all pissy because someone's gay, someone's bi, someone's trans, someone's black or Muslim, do me a very big favor and shut your goddamn fucking mouth. No one cares. No one gives a fuck about your goddamn opinion. Nope. Um, something I used to do all the time when I was writing reviews for Mission Start was I, I hated overly negative reviews. If I hated something, not hated, if I disliked something, I still forced myself to write four positive paragraphs and one negative. Period. And I like to do the same thing on this podcast. If I dislike something, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a well-thought-out reason. There's a few times, yes, that we've shit on something entirely. Like when Maya and I had to watch those two shows back to back that were just terrible. Um, I don't remember the name of those shows, but uh, we still tried to find positive things. Kiss Me First. Kiss Me First, yes. And Kiss Me First had a couple, I think two gay relationships in it. It was never something that we criticized because it doesn't, it didn't affect the plot. It was like it was a, it was part love story, but I mean it was just a bad story. So that's <laughs> wild to me that like people are pissed off about Tim Drake being by. Did it did it ruin the plot? Like what's going on in that story? That's what's important. 
I, I think the thing, like, so something that always bothers me is when people criticize things in the weirdest possible fashion. So this is slightly kind of on board, but you'll we'll get there. People criticizing some leap or jump that Captain America would make in their movies. And they're just like, nah, there's no way somebody would survive that. That's ridiculous. And I'm like, in the same universe where there's a talking fucking raccoon? Really? You're going to criticize a super soldier's jump off of a five-story building while there's a talking raccoon? Shh. Shut the fuck up. And I think that goes in line with Tim Drake being, uh, being by. You're, well, you're I really. Think... Sorry, I just, I was just like, you're really going to critique that when it doesn't have anything affect... to do with the story. Yeah, yeah, like it doesn't affect the direct plot. It well, just another, adds to the character. Another thing about a comic, once what draws you to that comic? You know, there's something for everybody, and a lot of things about a comic book. Uh, what superhero comics specifically are you there for the action or are you there for the uh, human element the complexities and the nuance that makes up the character you know are you there for the secret identity side you, you know um, it's just all of these things make a comic so, of course, there's going to be the personal uh, aspect of the person's makeup that's going to be prevalent, you know, it's going to be relevant. It's been yeah. like that in comics for as long as there's been comics. True. You know, that's always been part of the struggle, you know, the everyday life of a hero in their downtime. Uh, that's what made comics like Spider-Man and X-Men and the Fantastic Four so popular when they first came out in the 60s. Is it what, yeah, there was action, there was, you know, battles, uh, but the big draw was the complexity of the characters, who they were at their core. It yeah. makes them more interesting and more relatable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I would never say that Tim being bi isn't important, um, but it's not. It's not necessary to move the plot forward. Is all I was getting at. No, no. I, yeah, I see what you're saying there. You know, I'm just. I mean, even in comics, where you know, he's straight. I'm sorry, but that doesn't affect the plot. It's not. It's not part of the driving force. It's, exactly. Your, yeah. Your sexuality is. It belongs to the character, but it is not the story, you know, whether they're bi, straight, gay, whatever. That's not the story, you know? Yeah. Exactly. It's it's just, it's wild to me. It's like, I, I genuinely hate when, like, we're, this is going to tie into what if here in a second, but um, when people utilize dumb talking points to criticize, to, to, yeah, try to criticize something like, hey, we're going to talk about what if here in a minute. And the episode centers around Peggy Carter. Um, I can't tell you how many incels that I saw review this show saying, oh, it's just SJW bullshit. And it's like, if you're going to come at me with a review of, of a thing and your first initial reaction is to criticize gender roles, or sexuality, you're not actually criticizing anything. What you're doing is you're as you're cherry picking talking points that you want to bring up because you think you're an intellectual. In reality, you're dumb as shit. Because if you were to criticize this show, you talk about the voice acting, you talk about the animation, you would talk about the progression of the plot. Maybe it went too fast, maybe it went too slow. If it was funny to you or not, that's what the fuck you would talk about, which we are going to talk about. Because that's how we, as the three of us, are fucking smart, and you're a goddamn idiot. I am 
unbelievably fed up with these morons that just can't get past superficial shit. You don't get to review anything anymore. You don't get to enjoy anything. I hope for the rest of your life, there's some gay agenda in every fucking form of media that you enjoy. I hope that Star Wars and Marvel and DC and fucking Harry Potter and Ninja Turtles and Transformers and, and He-Man and fucking Mario and, and Looney Tunes and, and Disney and everything is ruined for you forever because you can't get past your own internalized sexuality problems. Period. Transformers has already done it. Oh, I'm, oh I know. I know. Oh, I know. I, like again, like the, I watched, you know, the five episodes of He Man, or well, Masters of the Universe Revelations. Fucking yeah. fantastic. Andy and I have been talking Wonderful. about for the past week. Andy and I have been talking about for the past week. The friend I play games with. How does anyone hate this show? Well, when you find out why people hate it, it's for the exact same reasons we've been talking about. Oh, well, it's all about Tila, not about He Man. Who the fucking cares? The show's not called He-Man. It's called Masters of the Universe. The original show in the 80s was called He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. But Very true. <clears throat> but it's, know, also, like it's also it's taking a plot from the 80s that was okay at best. Like I know people loved He-Man and it was fun, but it was definitely an 80s cartoon that was meant to sell toys. It's not that fucking great. It yeah. Was, it, it, very few episodes were good for the most part it was it was heavily on the cheese heavy heavy cheese oh my goodness in these five episodes these five episodes are better than anything that came out in the 80s period they were they, very well done very there's a lot well of done. heart there's a lot of character development and progression it's it's handled with love and it shows uh but yeah that's you know these these things here are, are springboarding us into the what if conversation yeah so yeah that's that's yeah that's ultimately what i'm sorry i got a little angry there for a second i apologize everybody i'm just tired <laughs> of it <laughs> um i'm um, probably gonna leave my cam off for the rest of the session because i've got i guess from where i'm a little tense myself <laughs> i've got hmm. an eye twitching so it's uh, driving me nuts i can't put the lights on it's just right. annoying the shit out of me it's all right so I'll um, be taking a most relaxer after this. <laughs> uh, so let's let's dive into what if um, this episode. Uh, what again? As we talked about in the past, I I used to read what if growing up. I loved it. I actually just read one recently here that was I didn't read when I was a kid called What If Flash, Flash Thompson Was Spider Man, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, this show is taking that spirit and doing the same thing, but with the MCU. So the first episode that just came out today as of recording this, uh, two days ago, by the time this airs, um, is uh, what if Captain Carter was the first Avenger? Uh, what I really enjoyed about the opening of this episode was that the Watcher was like, immediately tells the audience, one, one small uh, change can, you know, like change an entire... Um, an entire story. Mm -hmm. And and when that changed happened, he goes, that right there, that's the difference. I was like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that was really neat. Um, when I got up this morning and I was going to watch it, I'm, for some reason, my dumbass thought it was on Netflix. Uh, it was not on Netflix. <laughs> I figured out where it was. And I was telling my sister about it and she's like well what is this one i was like this is about what if uh captain carter became you know the yeah uh, the first avenger she's like who's captain carter i was like i have no idea but we're about to find out <laughs> I mean, i'm kind of yeah I'm kinda, i was kind of surprised that they didn't do like what if peggy carter took the super soldier serum i was that's i was surprised that wasn't the name of the question but yeah well you know i mean again it didn't take me long to figure out who she was i was like oh yeah. it's her okay yeah, yeah this is going to be very interesting. All right, cool. Let's go with this. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I was going to say that I really enjoyed about this was I first loved the animation. I thought it was very well well done. Oh, it was. It's, it's like 3D, but cell shaded at the same time. I was like, oh, this is this is gorgeous. Um, but the other thing I was going to say is that they're they're shorter episodes than we're used to. There is only like 25 minutes long. 
But um, yeah, I, think, I think it was 32 minutes and change with the credits. Okay, because we started it at midnight and it ended at at 12:25 is when the credits started rolling. And I looked at, I like fast forwarded through the credits, and I was just like, "Wow, these are fucking long credits." But that's animation for you. It takes a lot of people, um, and especially you know if it's only one animation studio doing it, and this particular style of animation. Um, because I was thinking, well, since they're standalone stories, why don't they just get di different animation studios to make it? And then I saw that Hasbro is actually releasing uh, a series of what if Marvel Legends that are sculpted and molded and painted in the exact animation style, which is different from their standard action figures. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, that's why yeah, they wanted a more cohesive unit look. Yeah. Um, so it's going to take a little longer in production time for that. So, but yeah, the animation is beautiful. I enjoyed it very much. Yeah, um, I. Uh, the um, voice acting could use some work. That's my biggest critique about it. Is like Sebastian Stan is not a good voice actor. He's just neither is Dominic Cooper. No, <laughs> Dominic Cooper was doing his like. Uh, high pants, uh, or like not high pants, but his, uh, his his newscaster from the 1940s newscaster. Yeah, voice. yeah, he was. was oh, like, look at this! This lady's had the super soldier serum. <laughs> what happens next? Oh, it's so funny! Oh, look at this dame here. <laughs> yeah, when did dames learn to fight like that? Like, what? <laughs> what? But I mean, other than that, I mean, yeah, it was enjoyable. Some of the the voice acting was like, wow, wow. I mean, to this be to be could do. <laughs> credit where Chris do. Uh, Haley Atwell and um, uh, Chris Evans actually were solid. Mm -hmm. That was um, not Chris Evans. It's not. It was not Chris Evans. I thought he it, I thought everyone, no. It was Haley Atwell. Wow, I am surprised. I thought everyone was reprising their roles. Who was it then? Uh, I remember. Give me a second, and I'll tell I'm you. I'm actually I'm looking it up right now because I need to know immediately. Right. Pardon me. Sorry, <laughs> that's right to the mic, and I didn't mean to do that. Uh, Josh Keaton. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, he's a fucking fantastic voice actor, so I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. One of the things I, I actually noticed that they brought back Neil McDonough, the guy that played Dum Dum Dugan in the Captain America First Avenger movie. Yeah. They actually brought him back to voice Dum Dum Dugan. And I'm like, well, that's great. But yet they went with, you know, not Chris Evans, uh, which shocked me. <laughs> Maybe he was busy. Uh, I thought, yeah, I, I could have sworn it was everybody but Tom Holland reprising their role but i guess i was wrong i guess i was wrong i did enjoy bradley whitford um uh, as uh colonel uh what was his name uh john colonel john flynn yeah colonel flynn i was just looking at the mdb art i never gotten that just fyi <laughs> daryl hammond was a nazi general yeah uh, <laughs> did not know that speaking of nazis i could watch another hour of captain carter just fucking killing nazis yeah. just highly highly enjoyable especially with the 40s bebop music in the background oh yeah, yeah. it was fabulous like i i would watch the episode just for that first shot of her just like shield 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 in the front of the car and then the scene with the hydra stomper oh just perfect i fucking loved it I was like song. we were watching it and you know she took the super serum and the big brew haha that was made over oh it's a woman i was like yeah and you know what's more scary than an overpowered man a fucking overpowered woman that's what you're terrified you're terrified because that bitch could put you in the ground and snub you down to nothing you know, I what, I think that's one of the big things with men is they are scared of powerful women. Oh, yeah. I was going to say one of the big things that I loved that they did in this was that 
uh, Peggy Carter has been trained in, mu in multiple forms of combat. Oh, she's, yeah. she's a soldier. She, she knows how to fight. She knows how to use a lot of weapons. Steve didn't. So in, 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 if you watch Captain America, the first Avenger, he's not that great with the shield. He's, he's okay. I mean, he's, he, he's, he does well, but even when it comes to fighting, he's like, all right, she's immediately fucking amazing with it. Oh, yeah. And I, from my perspective, I'm like, yeah, she would know how to fight really well and become very adapted to have being a super soldier. But, you know, the thing is, they're not completely wrong. I mean, back then, yeah, women definitely didn't fight, fight on the front. But yeah. things were changing during World War II because, uh, like, one out of three of the 1,300 um, spies they had set up in Europe were women. That's one-third. You know, one-third of those people were women. Yeah. One of them uh, was Virginia Hall. And she was really notable because she wanted to be a U.S. diplomat. She didn't get to become one. She, she tried. She, when she um, went into working for the government, she basically became a secretary. She was a rich woman. Uh, she came from money, got an education. Uh, she was out hunting. She lost her leg. So she had a limp. But she was one of the most badass spies that we had on our side and you know the nazis couldn't catch her she was amazing i mean she helped us win the fucking war and it's like i don't want to hear this bullshit about women you know we've we've shown ourselves to be more than capable of fighting on the front we just don't Absolutely. want to you know who the fuck wants to you know i mean yeah. this is this is a thing women are not for the most part, we don't want to fight your fucking wars. We'd rather just settle this with a fucking dance-off or something, you know? I mean, show me who can do the makeup the best. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's one of them things. It's like I know people talked about, you know, it, it's a bit contentious in my own household. You know, the, the biggest losers of war are women and children. And yeah. I totally agree with that because even though I know men have always been on the front and they've lost their lives, it's like, who do you think is here left afterward that has to pick up the pieces of your mess? It's the women and the children. You know, yeah. we, we pay the ultimate price for these wars. And, you know, it, it affects our society on very deep levels. And I think to some extent, women are tired. Tired of fighting this bullshit. Tired of being told we can't. Tired of being told we shouldn't. You know, and it's being reflected in our media. And the incels can't stand it. No, I love that they made General Flynn a, a major fucking um, misogynist asshole. Yeah. Just to be proven wrong. Like, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to mm, hit you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I was afraid they were going to kill Tony or not Tony Stark, his dad. Because with him yeah. going into Hydra, I was like, oh no, please don't kill him. <laughs> I, loved, I loved the way the Red Skull died in this episode too. <laughs> Skin squished. Yeah. By his own maniacal creature that he wanted to bring out. So I thought for sure, like I was confident that Doctor Strange was going to show up at the end, at the end of that portal. That she went through. Um, because my, my theory is that the MCU is going to take the idea of what if and kind of do a little something different with it where um, Doctor Strange Supreme, as he's going to be called, is kind of building its own his own multiversal Avengers. That's my theory. And I thought for sure that's how this episode was going to end. And I even waited to the after credits and there was nothing. And I was like, okay, all right, I'll, we'll see you next week. But... Um, you might have to wait till the end. True, very true. Might have to wait until you know, episode fucking five or some shit like that. But um, I any am other... excited to watch the Doctor Strange though, because again, it tickles my brain. So yeah, excited I, for it. I've always been a big fan of multiversal stuff. Like if you can, uh, show me a story that changes what I uh, the concepts that I know. Um, I'm 100% in for it. So, like, one of my favorite 
stories, if you will, is like the the alternate reality where Bruce Wayne gets shot and Martha and Thomas Wayne become Batman and, and Joker, respectively. Um, love that. Absolutely love that. And I wish more media would do that. I really do. But um, well, like you said, people don't like change. It's true. It's very true. I, and also, I will give 100% uh, credit to Marvel for kind of introducing the multiverse um, uh, to audiences the way that they did through Loki and then through, you know, like kind of like, okay, now that you understand what a multiverse is, here's what if. Um, however, I am seeing a lot of people still not quite get the concept of it which is really funny to me. Uh, I saw somebody on Twitter last night talking about how it doesn't make any sense and that we've already seen this story, so why do we have to watch it again or some shit like that? I'm like, oh It's my not God. the same story. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. But... Um, I mean, there's... I mean, again, I, maybe not in recent superhero things, but, I mean, this is totally up women's alley. Yeah, you know, we're always going, well, what if, you know, about our own freaking lives. We've had a lot of movies Gosh. that, you know, encounter that what if moment things went this way instead of that way. Yeah, I do you that know? shit all the time. I, I, I literally the other day I was making a joke to my dad and I was like, in some multiverse, you're Batman. Uh, how, how would I become Batman? That doesn't make any sense. And I was like, I don't know. Your great grandparent started a business. And it became really successful. Some politician in that specific universe uh, where the comic of Batman doesn't exist created Gotham City. And then your parents, uh, gaining that notoriety, changed their last name to Wayne and named you Bruce. Like, that's how you play what if. That's how it works. Um, and... Uh, it's just it's it's a really hard concept for him for some weird reason, but I've always been I've always loved multiversals. That's why I was like saying that like I still haven't looked at that list you sent me, Maya. But I'm gonna I'm gonna look through that list and try to read different forms of what if. Um, fucking love it. Like I said, I, I read uh, I read the um, what if Flash Thompson became Spider Man, and. What makes that so absolutely fascinating is that, uh, you know, Flash isn't a hero. He doesn't have his hero moment like Spider-Man does or Peter did. Um, so his entire story and the way that he handles things was way different. Even though he was trying to be a hero, he's not. And he has to come to terms with that. It's so fucking cool. But anyway... Um, why don't we go ahead and give our final thoughts and a grade on the episode, uh, and then we'll move on to the last thing we want to talk about. Uh, Maya, why don't you go first? Uh, I'd give this episode a B overall. I mean, it was really well done. Uh, Animation-wise, was beautiful. The music was fun uh, and fitting. The voice acting was, could definitely use improvement. Um, hopefully, you know, future episodes will give us better results in the voice acting uh but because it was shaky at times and very uneven i have to give it a knock uh but other than that a lot of fun really enjoyed it i've always enjoyed the what if premise and i do have digitally every what if issue that's been published uh and some of my favorite ones you know they're always standalone stories. Uh, it's just the fun of the concept. What if this happened instead of this? Those little moments, like you mentioned, when she stayed instead of going up into the booth. Yeah. That little moments, what changed everything. Uh, it's just fascinating to to explore this, and I hope we get to see, um, you know, better uh voice acted stories it down the line but yeah, i think next week fun. i think next week will be a lot better because it's um it's a lot of people that i know that have done voice acting and um i'm really really hoping that chadwick boseman's voice acting is dynamite i think it what will is, be what is next week's about uh i don't know what the question they're going to use i think it's going to be what if t'challa was a ravager 
that's what I think it's going to be. But it's basically like Yandu picks up T'Challa instead of Peter. Oh. Yeah. So. Uh, but uh, but yeah, Maya. I'm sorry, Maya. Jesus Christ, Betty. <laughs> um, I I'll give it an A. Honestly, I mean, yeah, the voice acting could definitely use some work. Not gonna lie about that. But uh, overall, I think it was really good. I love the fact that when uh, Stark came up to her at the bar and gave her the the new suit, it was Union Jack, you know, and the the Captain America shield became a Union Jack instead. Yeah, which yeah. is which is interesting because one of the uh, members of the team actually went by the code name of Union Jack. Ah. Oh. Yeah, the uh, the one guy that had the beret on that was with Bucky and the bowler hat, Dum Dum Dugan, uh, the guy that had the beret with the mustache, that's Union Jack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Little deep comic knowledge there for you. Yeah. That's uh, cool. Carry on, sorry. But yeah, overall, I give it an A, and I'm very curious to see where it goes next week, and I'm hoping that you know, maybe the voice acting will be a little better, but I, I love the premise. And I was actually just thinking there is a, there's a show I watch on YouTube uh, that does what ifs of history, you know, that like what fun. if, you know, what if the South won the civil war or, you know, oh. what if uh, Constantine had never converted to Christianity, things like that. Interesting. You know? I, I mean, things that, that just one little change, what would it make to the rest of the world? And yeah. it's it's interesting to see where they take it. So I, I love the concept. I love the premise. So I'm, I'm hoping to see this tie into all the new movies that they'll be bringing out. What about you, Greg? Um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to give it a, a B plus. I think that um, it definitely suffers from voice acting problems and uh, a little bit of herky jerky animation. Um, I feel like some of the the the, the distance shots are a little stiff. Um, probably skimped a little bit on the animation just because it's it's as we stated earlier, it's all from the same studio, which means they probably had to try to crank this out as quickly as possible. But I didn't yeah. think it was so bad that it was unwatchable by any stretch of the imagination. It's yeah. just something I this and I was like, mm, that took me out a little bit. So, um, but. Uh, other than that, the story is fucking fantastic. I love the direction they took the story. Um, I, I again, as I said earlier, I could watch Captain Carter just fucking kill Nazis for another hour. Like that was highly entertaining. Um, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, Sebastian Stan, love you, bud. You're great as Winter Soldier on screen. Not, not behind a mic. No. Just straight up, not behind a mic. Uh, Though I do no. love the lines that they gave him. Those one-liners were fucking great. Um, <laughs> they were so fucking fun. But uh, but yeah, like I'm very excited for for more episodes of this because even if it's even if it doesn't lead anywhere within the MCU, um, if it doesn't tie into like multiverse of madness or some shit like that, and it's just this anthology series of of asking the question "What if" and playing with it, I'm so fucking down with that. Again, it was one of my favorite things to read as a kid. Of course, I've not read all of them, but I remember like right after Civil War came out, they came out with What If Civil War, and it was two scenarios in one comic. And I, I was like, this is this is amazing. Like I I I could read these all fucking day. So um yeah, um uh, B plus it only gets knocks for certain animation things and voice acting, but other than that, it's it's great. So again, like I said, we're going to review obviously these until they end, uh, which they come out every Wednesday. Uh, next week is the T'Challa as a Ravager one. Um, excited to hear Michael Rooker's, you know, Yondu back. Love Michael Rooker. So, and I know that Sean Gunn's going to be there as uh, what's his ass? Um, what's his ass? I'm trying to remember Sean Gunn's character's name as a Ravager. Oh, Craglin. Craglin, thank you. I was like, it starts with a K. It's right off the top tip of my tongue. Also, uh, Taser Face is going to be in it. So that'll be fun. <laughs> Taser Face. Um, plus, it's, 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 and this is a little bit of a heartbreaker situation, but it's uh, Chadwick Boseman's last uh, role he ever did before he passed away. Well, he's going to be in several episodes. Yes, yes. 
so it's not the last last. But I mean, yeah. I mean, what if is what if is yeah, be his the, last, yeah, yeah. The series of what if is his last. So I don't know how many episodes. Maybe four nine or five. Oh, oh, he's in. He's in. He's in four. They they, he's in they four. announced. Yeah, you know, they announced that the other day. He's in four total. Which leads me again into that whole like multiversal Avengers. But we'll see. We shall see. We shall see. Uh, I'm also curious if they're going to do a thing with this particular universe where we're watching one world in the multiverse versus multiple worlds. Because that the comic is, is, is a different world every single time. A different uh, uh, um, dimension, if you will. Um, so what I'm curious about is like somebody said on Twitter that kind of sparked my interest is like, because Captain Carter became the super soldier, um, it's now, it's now this butterfly effect into all the other stuff we're going to see throughout the show. I mean, yeah, if they stay in the same universe, there will be a massive butterfly effect. She's the world she's come back to is not going to be the Marvel universe. We know, right? Because she, she started off a completely different multiverse just right. by making that decision so that's 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 a hundred percent what i'm curious if they're going to do or not and i guess we'll find out soon you know as we keep watching the show but all right well let's uh let's finish this off i i um i wanted to kind of touch on this a little bit because i don't think i don't think it's necessary that betty and i just do what everyone's been doing and that's giving all the absolute praise to the suicide squad because and and not to throw anybody under the bus or whatever, but Maya is quite literally the only one who has said I didn't care for it, and I'm legit curious why. I know that in the past we've talked about like things like uh, uh, Thor Ragnarok, which if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, Maya, but your opinion was like it was fine, but I like my Thor stories to be more like what Dark World was. Yeah. Um, so I'm legit curious as to your take on this show, like what, or this movie, like what was it that you didn't care for that much? Uh, <laughs> pretty much the whole thing. I, I, I really, I really didn't like it. I, I, I didn't hate it. And don't get me wrong. It's absolutely better than the first Suicide Squad by leaps and bounds, but that didn't make it good. Um, to me, right, you know, of course. Th this is my opinion, of course. Um, I, the, the acting was fine for the most part. I can't stand Margot Robbie or Margot Robbie as a uh, Harley Quinn. I just hate her Harley Quinn. Um, I, I, and you know, that's, I enjoy James Gunn, but some of his, choices in this for the visuals I just didn't care for. Um, especially the part where she's breaking out of the mansion and killing everybody and the flowers are blooming everywhere. Behind her, the animated flowers and the birds. I think that was my most hated part of the movie. Interesting. <clears throat> um, I thought King Shark was stupid. Oh. Yeah, I wasn't a fan. Um, it, you know, to me, to me, he's always been more of a savage, vicious thing. You know, it's just off for me. It, it, these are just personal tastes of what I didn't like. I thought Idris Elba was amazing. And, you know, uh, his character, was it Bloodshot? Yeah, uh, not Bloodshot, Bloodsport. Bloodsport, yeah, I'm thinking of Del I'm thinking Deadshot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Will Smith's character. <laughs> um, <clears throat> much well, better funny. than Will Smith's character. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's funny because it was supposed to be Will Smith's character originally with the, in, yeah. in the first draft of the script. Yep. So. Now, he was definitely a good part you know i enjoyed uh joel kinnaman back as rick flag i've always i liked his rick flag um 
I really enjoyed Captain Boomerang from the first one, so I was shocked to see Captain Boomerang get taken out so quickly. A admittedly, I was too, but I was also shocked by that first scene to begin with, so... <laughs> yeah. Oh. I was not expecting I, that, that fucking... Spoiler I my, alert. <laughs> I love Michael Rooker, but I didn't care for his character in this at all. What's What's really funny is I was <clears> reading a, a <throat> synopsis on, on Savant, and apparently he is also in the comics a giant pussy. Like, oh, the character itself? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I thought it was just a funny, like, oh, it's it's all going to hell, and he fucking sprints away. Um, but, uh, yeah, in the comics, his, he... His he reaction, away. though, was just so over the top. I mean, to be fair, this whole movie is over the top, so... This is true. <laughs> I really enjoyed Polka Dot Man. I oh, like the yeah. visual effects of his powers. Um, Even though they are way different than the comic. How's that? Yeah. How do they work in the comic? Uh, you know those like black holes that would happen in cartoons that they fall into or they'd yeah. get the items out of? Kind of like that. Oh. Not exactly, but kind of like that. Does he see his mama in the comics too? No, no. That was hilarious. I'm just going to say it. No, it was Whoever funny. played his mother needs an Emmy, especially no, yeah, she, when she was doing Godzilla. You know, the, the, she, ah, ate up, she ate like, up oh every scene. <laughs> it was beautiful. She she really deserves something for that. I loved it. And, and see, that's one of the things that I didn't like. You know, oh. I, I didn't care for it. It's like visualize everything, you know, as your mother. I get that. But then literally showing everything as his mother. And then that was fine once, but to continue to show it. And then the giant version of it, I was just like, dumb. Um, I loved Capaldi as the thinker. And I thought, aside from Idris Elba, he gave a very strong performance and, you know, the uh, few speaking lines that he had. I really enjoyed uh, his mannerisms and everything. But I just it was very hit and miss, you know. I mean, there's, there's a lot of good things individually. But there's a lot of bad things to me individually. You know, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed Ratcatcher for the most part. But I would have totally been fine if she had died. Um, uh, like just fun little, about everybody else. Fun little fact about <clears throat> her character. The quirk of her constantly being asleep uh, was was added in in production of filming because the actress herself was constantly like tired and taking naps on set. Oh, bless her heart. <laughs> um, she's well, just that's a, cool that they worked with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's James Gunn in a nutshell, too. Like, he's he's never... He never cast or or doesn't listen to doesn't cast out of character, like he'll always cast where he thinks it's best. And then on top of that, like he he um, he listens to the actors a lot. If an actor says this isn't working for the character that I've studied, he's like, "All right, what do you want to do?" And then they talk it out, um, which is I fucking love that about James Gunn. Um, but um, no, you know it's 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 funny you saying this, Maya, because I remember the conversations that you and I had about Thor Ragnarok. Uh, you know, Thor Ragnarok is a hundred percent a comedy, and something that doesn't work for you is taking characters that you have established in your mind as not comedic suddenly comedic. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, for instance, with Thor, there are elements that work and elements that don't when it comes to the comedic. Uh, I've always viewed Thor as a very serious character. Uh, you know, uh, like in Ragnarok, he's all cracking jokes for the sake of cracking jokes. But in the first one, the comedic elements come from his lack of knowledge about the environment that he's in. And to me, that works. Uh, that is you know, more in line with the original Norse god Thor. Exactly. He, he took himself very seriously, but he was very funny because of how seriously he took himself, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the character of Thor himself was 
was wasn't serious in Thor Ragnarok. I um uh I don't think Thor was cracking jokes. It was the characters around Thor that was cracking jokes. Yeah, about. yeah. That's well, I've only watched it the one time and I did kind of fall asleep about two thirds of the way into it. I really do need to give it another watch, a fair watch. Uh, I'm not going to deny that. I might do that this afternoon. It's 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 totally up to you. I mean, I, I and this is this is again as we've established a thousand fucking times. This is purely subjective because taste is subjective. And if there's something that everyone loves because it's funny or whatever, and the comedy just doesn't work for you, that's fine. I don't exactly. like Seinfeld. I don't like Seinfeld. I think it's a terrible show, but yeah. it's very popular. I don't like Friends. Yeah. I think it's a terrible show, but it's very popular. Um, that doesn't make the people that enjoy it <laughs> for those reasons wrong. Right. Just like exactly. it doesn't make my reasons for not liking it wrong because they're valid criticisms based on my subjective tastes. The, exactly. What would make it wrong is be like, well, upcoming Thor movie, Love and Thunder, Jane Foster is going to be Thor, which <gasps> was established in a What If comic back in the 70s, by the way. Um and then actually came to fruition, you know, what, five, six years ago? Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, people hate it. They're like, oh, it's different. They're just doing this to be PC, whatever. I hate it because blah, because it's woman, or it's this, or it's Wham. gay, or it's that. And, you know, that's when you're wrong, because those yeah. are not constructive, valid criticisms. It's just exactly. because... Yeah, fragile. it's like, you know, sorry, they're not making this movie for you. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then if you're in the minority, and then you're going to be in the minority. There are lots of movies out there that I can't freaking stand that people love. And yeah. I'm just like, nope, not my cup of tea. No, thank you. I have I've, no met, people, I've <laughs> met people that fucking hate Quentin Tarantino movies. I I'm not a fan. Them. My it's... sister, my older sister loves them. I'm not a fan. It's just not my cup of tea. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And that's ultimately what I wanted to hear from <clears throat> Maya's perspective because when when uh, I, I'm, I'm an advocate, a big advocate for listening to other people's opinions when they disagree with mine for two reasons. Um, a, I find it fascinating. And B, maybe there's something that I have a little bit of rose-colored glasses on. You know, maybe there's something there that I'm not putting into perspective because I fucking loved it. So hearing somebody else's take on it who doesn't align with mine is refreshing. I really fucking dig it. And that's why I was like the second that I that we talked about it in our group chat and, and I was like, I fucking loved it. And Betty, you were like, awesome. I'm excited to watch it. And Maya goes, I didn't care for it. I was like, Oh, we have to talk about it now. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, you know, I didn't even know this movie existed until y'all brought it up last week. I was like, what? Why did they make another one of these? They just made this movie. I was like, what is going on here? And then it's like everybody around me, it was just twittering all around me. Everybody's talking about it. And I was like, all right, let's 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 definitely watch it. I'm curious, man. I didn't think the first one was that bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Um, this one, I think it blew it completely out of the park. And I mean, you know, I went into this not knowing what the premise was, didn't even look it up or nothing. All I knew is that Flula was going to be in it because my <laughs> sister loves Flula and I love Flula. So she was like, yeah, Flula's in it. I was like, oh, holy shit. And I kind of felt like he, he was carried through the whole movie, even though he didn't last the whole movie just because of that javelin. He was there in spirit. That's yeah. the thing that that's the thing that threw me off about this movie that I was not expecting in any way, capacity, or form was the massacre of half of the group immediately. Oh yeah, that's. I mean, I was like, what? I was thinking that I was getting set up for this movie with all these major people. I was like, okay, this is gonna be cool, but tell me, I don't have to look at that weasel for the next two and a half hours. Please tell me I don't have to look at that weasel. And then he starts drowning. I'm like, yeah. And then he saves him. I'm like, no. <laughs> and then he's like, the weasel's dead. And yeah. you're like, yeah, again. Yeah. And then so man, at the end when the weasel lived and ran off into the jungle, were like, you no. like, no. <laughs> and that's, I think that's what, you know, again, I totally watched this movie with rose colored glasses on. That, that opening just, 
impressed me so much. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm going to watch this and love it. (laughs) That was the same thing here because one of the big things that I I always know about Hollywood is well-known actors don't like being killed off immediately. They don't like having their face covered. One of the biggest problems that has always arisen from these superhero movies and shows is that there's a certain amount of time in their contract that their face has to be on screen or some shit like that. That's always been the way that it is. And it's always irritating to me. That's why I loved when, when um, um, uh, I want to say Keith Urban, but that's not the, that's not the actor. Carl Urban. Urban. Carl Urban. Thank you. Carl Urban played Judge Dredd in the movie Dredd where he refused to take the fucking helmet off. He was like, I don't care what my script says. Judge Dredd doesn't take his fucking helmet off. I don't take my helmet off. I was <laughs> like, that's awesome. You're awesome. Thank you for that. And and um, so so for all these big names to just be like, yeah, I'll die in the first ten minutes. I don't care. I was like, oh my god, yes. Like it's just it's just refreshing. It was. Um, uh, by the way, my friend uh, Andy that I've mentioned multiple times, um, he uh, hates Pete Davidson. Don't know why. Don't understand it. He just finds Pete Davidson insufferable. <laughs> so so the second I'm watching that movie and he's the first one. I guess technic. No, he is the first one die because Weasel doesn't die. Um, I was like, "Well, Andy's gonna love this movie." <laughs> and Andy said last night, "I was like, I'll just watch the first ten minutes again to watch Pete Davis get a bullet in the head." And I'm like, "All right, man." <laughs> I, I have to say, it did leave Jeff, I think, a little confused <laughs> in the very beginning because he wasn't. We didn't know what we were walking into, and we weren't sure of the jump cuts, you know, and. He was like, I think I missed something. I was like, no, I don't think you did. I think we've seen the same things and we're just supposed to roll with it. So let's just roll with it. You know? <laughs> That's the biggest critique that I've seen about it, Betty, is the the um, people feel that it's disjointed in its, in its narrative. It is a little bit, but, you know, again, I like those kind of stories. It doesn't bother me um, as long as I'm pretty clear as to where we're going. And after a while, it didn't take me long to figure out, okay, this is this is the formula, you know, okay, I've got it. Let's go with it. Now we were talking about this um, cause we did discuss it a little bit yesterday when we were playing well before we played D and D um, like there was the one part where uh, rat catcher two and her dad were up on that tower having that moment. And right after it was done, Jeff was like, how they get up on that tower? I was like, man, I don't know. I don't. We're just suspension of disbelief. We have to go with it, okay? Yeah. You know? At that point, it's again. At that at that point, like, I'll bring a point up with my mom. When people ask questions like that, I go, I don't know if you notice this, but there's like a giant shark and a giant starfish from space. You know. Let's not ask questions again, like that. I mean, I just, my brain but, went there too. I just didn't. I didn't voice it aloud. Heather's went there as well. I know apparently many people's did. And like, okay, it makes me feel the a little rats, better. The rats carried them up there. A lot of rats, man. There were a lot also, of rats on Starro. There were. Uh, on uh, earlier yeah. in the movie when it showed Ratcatcher's dad, I was like, was that Taika Waititi? And then in that final yep. scene, I was like, oh, that is Taika Waititi. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, Ratcatcher 2 does not exist in the comics. Yeah. yeah, she was a, a, a made-up character for this, wasn't she? And yeah. She was supposed to die, and she didn't. And I'm glad oh, she I didn't, because I, I loved know. her. Yeah. Oh, uh, Viola Davis, as Amanda Waller, killed it once again. I love when she plays an evil just bitch. <laughs> uh, she said in an interview uh, for the promotion for this that she was like, um, Amanda Waller is one of her favorite roles she's ever played. <laughs> I'm oh, like, it, was, it was so cool. Was like, I loved it when she was like, you know, get back here. I'm going to push his butt. And the chick comes up with a golf club and just smacks her in the back of the head. And dude's like, whoa, all those kids. I'm like, yeah, girl, you get it. Smack her in the back of the head. She's still alive. It's okay. You know? <laughs> um, it was really good. Uh, so that final end credit scene, by the way, is going to lead into the Peacemaker TV show that's going to be on HBO Max. Um, I don't like John, John Cena, Cena his with own the show. Wig. That's not a wig. That's his actual fucking hair. Oh my hair. god, was that his real hair? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it looked really bad. Well, yeah. Um, 
I personally really liked John Cena's Peacemaker because it was fucking hilarious to me. Oh, he was. Yeah, I thought it was a good character, but you know that little thing, the turn at the end. I was like, whoa. Well, yeah, I guess I guess I should have seen this coming, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, like like Peacemaker is a complete piece of shit. Um, in no way, shape, or form did I did I think that he was going to like be a a good guy, like especially fighting fucking Bloodsport the whole time, which walk them walking through that village was so goddamn funny. Like Andy well, and I what still... about the tidy whities I mean, that, <laughs> that right there that... tells you everything you need to know about his character. Oh, hundred percent tidy whities a hundred percent. The funny part is that Andy and I now quote whenever we're playing Fall Guys every fucking night, at least twice, where it's like, it's not showing off if it's cool as shit. And one of us will just go, fuck, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. It's so funny. But yeah, I I, I, oh, I love this. I loved it so much. And I, I've watched it twice now because I just enjoyed it so much. And that's, that's the other thing. Like you mentioned um, King Shark. This is the fourth version I've seen of King Shark in animated shows. And it's always it's always a different version of King Shark. It's never the same. Yeah. Uh, because in the Harley Quinn show, he's voiced by Run Funches, the comedian, and is kind of is meek a little bit, and he's a tech nerd. Um, that's that's the character of King Shark in, in, in the Harley Quinn show. And I love that. But then there's also the version of King Shark in the animated movie um, uh, Justice League Dark Dark Justice or Justice League Dark Apocalypse War, um, and in that movie, all he says is King Shark is a shark, but he's like gigantic and muscular and savage. Mm -hmm. But all he says is King Shark is a shark. Um, you know what it made me think of is like if you took Disney's Moana, that that guy from Moana. And made him into a shark and stuck him in a, you know, Justice League movie. This is what he'd be. Are you talking you about? Seen uh, oh, yeah, I've seen him multiple times. Yeah, you're talking about Maui. Yeah, yeah. He reminded me of Maui because you know he's he's big and but you also just want to pet him. It's like oh, when he was looking at all those little evil jellyfish, you know, I had no idea they were evil when he first walked in there. Also, also a brand new addition to that's not from the comic. Well, you know, and he's like, oh, friends. I'm like, oh, and then they get, I was like, oh, no. The funniest scene with him was the, was the fake mustache. He's like, fake mustache. Yeah. And they're like, and then, and then like blood sports trying to be nice. and like, it's not going to work, dude. It's, it's your, you still look like a giant shark, but peacemakers like, that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard of. You still look like a shark and he's doing this. He's like, fuck! Bless his heart. <laughs> Fucking, oh my God, it's cracking up. I mean, I, <sighs> I, I, I wish Maya could have enjoyed it more. I could have thrown on those rose-colored glasses just to enjoy it. Because, I mean, yeah, I totally did. I'm not going to lie. Um, I was totally biased after those first 10 minutes. I was like, yeah, I'm down with this. We're I, definitely I, I, I definitely... I definitely have that with James Gunn films. Um, I, I think he's a fucking fantastic filmmaker. Have you ever seen Slither with Michael Rooker and uh, Nathan Fillion? Yeah. It's. Have you seen that, Maya? No. Oh my god. So the the idea is that Nathan Fillion is a cop in this very small town, and an alien comes in, and the alien is kind of like a slug, but it's a it's a parasitic slug. And it attaches to Michael Rooker's character, who's this big like asshole in the in the town. Um, and it slowly starts to like change him. And it's it's very dark, but also very funny. Mm -hmm. Um highly, highly recommend Slither. I fucking love that movie, but it's James Gunn in a nutshell. Also, uh, have you guys seen Super with um Yeah. Okay. Have you seen Super, Maya? Nope. I love that fucking movie. That's another one I, I highly recommend. Um, that one stars the guy who played, uh, I can't think of his name. He was in The Office, um, Dwight. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rain. Never Rain. Never Rain. Rain Wilson. Rain Wilson, thank you, yes. And um, uh, what's his name? Just recently transitioned. The fuck is his name? Elliot Page. Elliot right. Page, thank you. Good gravy. Uh, yeah, stars Elliot Page. Um, 
obviously pre-transition. Uh, and uh, it's it's a story of, of Rain Wilson trying to become a superhero in a world without superheroes, so he has no superpower. Um, but he gets in over his head, and it's, it's fucking wonderful. Like, again, highly recommend that one. It was. It was good. Um, but, you know, I... I love James Gunn, and if that means I have rose-colored glasses on for stuff like this, that that's that's what it means. But this is also why, you know, talking to somebody like Maya who who doesn't, I want to hear that opinion, and I'm glad that you gave it to us. I'm glad that you agreed to kind of talk about it because it's enjoyable to me. I don't know if it's enjoyable to everybody else, but who cares? It's our podcast. Just about everybody that I've spoken to loved it. Yeah, well, like I said, I know I'm in the vast minority here of people who didn't love it. I don't think it was poorly done. If I had to give it a grade, I'd give it a C minus. Well, that's not bad. No, I don't me, hate it. I just didn't enjoy it. My kid came out and watched this with us, so that speaks volumes to me as well. You know, uh, if she's going to watch something with us, it really has to capture her attention, and it did. So I was pleased with that aspect. And again, I know I have rose colored glasses on for it. I'm not going to lie. I, I loved it. Every minute of it. I was on the edge of my seat. Just, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, not everybody feels that way. And again, I'm, I'm, I can slap those rose colored gl glasses on real easy if I want to. And I have no problem doing it. Um, I don't think that's normal, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Because if I want to enjoy something, I probably will. If I've already set up my mind, I'm not going to enjoy it. I probably won't. So that's why I'm glad I don't know about a lot of things. Because like I was telling Jeff, I don't really get commercials anymore. Uh, the media awesome. I consume yeah. doesn't have commercials for the most part. And so I don't really hear about anything that's coming out. I rely on other people to tell me. So I, I don't, I don't know. It's like I'm kind of in this half world of, you know, not communication and half world of communication. I just, I don't pay attention to all the bullshit that's going on around me anymore. I just watch what I want to watch. <laughs> uh, legitimately, the the way that I get my information is through Twitter nowadays. Um, I've I've liked and had it like uh, cast to me, um, like IGN and GameSpot and a couple other websites that you know tell me about new movies coming out or like, have you heard about this Nicolas Cage movie called Pig? That's getting rave fucking reviews right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. So <laughs> if it were for IGN, I wouldn't know about that movie, or at least other sites. But um, it's uh, he's he's plays a, a a truffle farmer, and he has his prize pig, prize truffle pig, who gets kidnapped or taken or whatever, and he goes on this like revenge spree to get her back. Oh, yeah. so it's like Nicolas Cage is a John Wick character. <laughs> kind of, kind of, from what I understand, yeah. Um, okay, but I I wouldn't have known about it otherwise. Like, so see, that's, that's, that's how thing. I get that information. I rely on you guys, and I rely on Jeff and my sisters. You know, because again, people in my circle, if they're if they're keeping up with this stuff, I'm okay to be my nerdy self. You know, they can let me know of all the cool stuff I need to keep track of. I'm going to be over here watching documentaries. You know. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's stupid, but I feel happy this way. Again, I pay for YouTube, so there's no commercials on there. I don't watch regular TV anymore unless it's a show that we've already dedicated time to. I mean, everything that I watch is basically just pre-programmed for my brain. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, we have we have uh, if if not through a friend, um, uh, through uh, you know a subscription service that we pay for. So all the shows that I watch are through that. And my my like my little brother bought um the sixty dollar Hulu account. So now even shows that are on TV I don't get commercials for. Yeah. So I don't see any commercials. Like I've had friends and family ask me, like, have you ever seen this new Geico commercial? I'm like, I haven't seen a fucking no. Geico commercial in those how long. <laughs> yeah, I'm like if it's a commercial, no, I can tell you right now, I haven't seen it. Unless, oh, well, when I go over to um, my boy's house on the weekend, they'll be watching TV. And, and 
I'll see a commercial and I'll be like, ha, and they'll be like, you haven't seen that? And I'm like, no, dudes. <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought we'd had this well established by now. The only TV I watch is at your house and that's for the couple hours I'm here. So yeah, you know, so it amuses them. Yeah, I know that when I when I go to my brother's house this weekend to watch the Raider game, I'm going to see commercials there. <laughs> but that's about it. Yeah. All right, well, why don't, why don't we go ahead and wrap up this this puppy and uh, call it a day for the Paul Caius. This is a good podcast. This is some good conversation. This is a, this was this was solid. It was solid, y'all. Nice. Um uh but yeah, um like I said, it's going to do it for us today, guys. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about What If Episode 2. Uh, if we add anything, we'll let you know. Or not, and we'll just surprise you like we did today with the, the Suicide Squad. Who the fuck knows? That was that was literally a five last-minute edition, five minutes before we went live. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, But yeah, make sure you follow all the socials. And if we do add something before we record or before we're about to record, we'll definitely let you know. Um, but... Uh, other than that, uh, make sure you check out the Teespring store. Uh, did we add some new stuff, Maya? Uh, not in the past couple of weeks, no. Okay. I, I saw I'm that you posted something on Instagram, busy. and I wasn't sure. Oh, I was just, you know, periodically try to, you know, promote it. Yeah. Um, you know, use the code A-Q-U-T-E-N at checkout to get 10% off of your total order. Uh, get some cool stuff, you know. Uh, tank tops. T-shirts, coffee mugs, tumblers, pint glasses. Uh, you know, there's even uh, hoodies there. Fall's coming up. You know, it's still hot now, but orders are slow because of the pandemic. So if you want to have a hoodie just in case, you know, yeah. when the nights start to get chilly, now's the time to think about ordering one. But, uh Yeah. Absolutely. There's a lot of cool stuff on there. Stickers. Put yeah, our stickers cartoon are... faces everywhere. Uh, school's coming up, so if you're, uh, you know, you've already started, started here. here. Yeah, we started on Monday, man. Well, I know that uh, not my kid. She's homeschooled, but you know, yeah, yeah, got another mine's, month to go. <laughs> mine's doing virtual academy, so she doesn't start until next week. I don't think. Um, yep, yeah, we'll start back in September because uh, she went longer. You know we didn't actually finish until a month ago. So mm. all the schools in our district started up today. So, but regardless, if you're heading, you know, if you're, if you're going back to school or, or whatever, you can buy some stickers and pop that onto your books or your, your uh, binders or whatever, whatever you're using. So that's what I was, that's what I was going for with that. Uh, also uh, uh, go to the YouTube channel. Hit the, you know, we've got the live live feed. I mean, granted, today wasn't, oh, it was just me, mainly. Yeah, um, But, uh, yeah, go go over there. Uh, give it a like, a follow, leave a comment. You know, it helps engagement. It helps with the algorithm to, to boost us to other people. Um, I know that we're going to try to do more stuff with the social medias here soon. So, you know, go to go over to the, the TikTok and Give that a little follow, and you know, when we upload shit, we'll actually, you know, you'll see it. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I think that's, I think that's it. I think that's it on my notes. Uh, Maya, where can folks find you? You can find me on Facebook under my name, uh, Maya Don Fisher. It's a public profile. If you're interested in following me on Twitter or Instagram, which I'm not as active on as I am Facebook, uh, you can. Click those links on my Facebook page and follow me from there. Uh, aside from that, I'm on two other podcasts. Every uh, well, two other podcasts on the Realm of Collectors YouTube channel. Every other Wednesday night at 9:30 p.m. Eastern on Figure Banging. It's a live action figure review show for Transformers, um, where we act like 12 year olds. It's goofy, but it's fun. <laughs> Uh, and then every Friday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on Nerd Life Syndicate. And we just added a new cast member uh, permanently last week. Uh, our good friend E.E. E., uh, he's been on the show here before, actually, Eric Espada. Um, actually, I think he was the last guest we had before Betty became a permanent member on here. If memory serves. And it may. But, yeah. 
Uh, we talk about all things in pop culture, entertainment, nerd, nerddom, uh, every Friday night at 9. And it's a lot of fun. Hop in the live chat and interact with us. We have a blast. And that's everywhere I am. What about you, Betty? Um, I'm on Facebook. Uh, Betty Badger Ogletree. Come find me there. You can find me wherever else. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, tired, man. I've been up too long. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and uh, let's wrap this puppy up. You can follow me on all socials under Chub Rock Geek. Uh, you can follow me on uh, another podcast I do with my buddy Anthony over at Mission Start Podcast or the Mission Start Tubes Twitter. Uh, uh, this is our YouTube channel. Uh, where we just talk about video game stuff. So if that's something you're into, go check that out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's it for us, guys. Uh, again, episode two of What If. Uh, that's for sure. But uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Be a distant human. Give someone a compliment. It'll make their day. And we'll see you next week. Peace, love, and lollipops. Take care, everybody.